Hello everybody, today we will present you the Convention on Biological Diversity. According to the Article 2 of this convention, biological diversity is defined as the variability among living organisms from all sources, terrestrial, marine and other aquatic ecosystems, and ecological complexes of which they are part. Therefore, from a juridical perspective, biological diversity includes diversity within species, between species, and diversity of ecosystems. But why we need to protect biodiversity? Why so important for our planet and for our society as well? A rich biodiversity translates into a healthy ecosystem, providing humans with fresh water, fertile and stable soils that are necessary for our sustainment. Food crops, for example, depend on animals and insects to pollinate them, and human activities such as deforestation contribute to climate change by releasing greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. But how can you protect something that is not restricted by man-made boundaries, such as nature and wildlife? The answer is international law. The first effort to protect nature started at the beginning of the 20th century, targeting those species commercially exploitable by human society, for example the protection of birds useful for agriculture. Only in 1972 was first discussed the urgence to protect nature, with the Stockholm Conference on the Human Environment. The leading concept of this convention was sustainable development, defined as a process that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generation to meet their own needs, meaning that species need to be used in a sustainable way, ecosystems need to be protected and ecological function need to be restored. The Convention on Biological Diversity, short CBD, was the first international treaty that recognized that biodiversity has a value for humankind. It aims to protect biodiversity and to promote the sustainable use of natural resources. The Convention on Biological Diversity was signed in 1992 during a major conference of the United Nations in Rio de Janeiro, the so-called Earth Summit, and it entered into force in 1993. The Convention on Biological Diversity is a legally binding document, and thus all countries who have signed it also need to act accordingly to its content. However, there is one important concept, the sovereign right to exploit the own resources. This means that each country has the right to exploit its own resources or cause damage to its own environment. But this right also comes with the responsibility to ensure that such activities do not cause damage to the environment outside of this country. Today, 196 parties have ratified the Convention on Biological Diversity, 195 countries and the European Union. A big exception are the United States of America, who have not ratified the Convention on Biological Diversity. So, who makes sure the countries also act according to the CBD? There are several organs that were created for this purpose. The Conference of the Parties, short COP, is the decision-making organ of the Convention on Biological Diversity and it contains representatives from each country that has ratified the Convention. The COP reviews the progress and identifies new priorities for the Convention on Biological Diversity. To do so, it can also use the advice of the other organs. These other organs are the CBD Secretariat that is responsible for the administrative tasks, the subsidiary body for scientific, technical and technological advice that contains experts from scientific and technical fields that can give advice, and the subsidiary body on implementation. The subsidiary body on implementation was created by the Conference of the Parties in 2014, and it is responsible to review the progress of implementation and to suggest measures for improvement. The Convention on Biological Diversity has three main goals. The conservation of biological diversity, the sustainable use of the components of biological diversity and the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits arising out of the utilization of genetic resources. To conserve the biological diversity, there are two approaches, in situ and ex situ conservation. 
In situ conservation is the conservation of habitats or species in their natural surroundings, such as the creation of protected areas or specific measures for a threatened species in their natural habitat. Ex situ conservation is the conservation of species or habitats outside of their natural surroundings. This can be creating breeding programs in wildlife parks for threatened species, but also measures to reintroduce them in their natural habitat. The second goal, the sustainable use of the components of biological diversity, is all about using nature and its resources in a way that is sustainable and that takes future needs into account. But these goals of the Convention on Biological Diversity are not very concrete, so how does the implementation work? The main actors of the Convention on Biological Diversity are the parties. This means that each country has the responsibility to develop and implement a concrete plan that should allow to reach the goals that are set by the Convention. These plans are the so-called National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plans. To help the countries set up these plans, there exists the Strategic Plan for Biodiversity. This is a political instrument that was set up by the Conference of the Parties. And the current version was set up in 2011 and it contains 20 targets that should be reached until 2020. We are now in 2021 and the global report published in 2020 by the CBD Secretariat shows that none of the 20 targets set up for the 2011-2020 period was fulfilled. The possible reason behind this failure is, for example, the fact that it's difficult to define uh, whether a target is met or not. And it's also unclear how to monitor progresses in reaching targets. Therefore, a possible solution would be to define concrete targets that are easily measured and perhaps integrate some regional and continental targets as well, thus increasing the collaboration between countries. The next Biodiversity Convention meeting will take place this October in Kumang, China, where the post-2020 targets will be discussed. But beside this, in 2015, all UN member states adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. In its core, there are 17 Sustainable Development Goals that aim to end poverty and inequality improve health, education and economic growth, all while fighting climate change and preserving nature. And this is the first agenda where the fight of poverty in all its dimensions is combined with sustainable development objectives.